Do you love doing chores? What about deep cleaning your house? I know I sure don't. Welcome to the Fervent Four. Did you know that only 4% of businesses ever cross the annual million dollar revenue mark? What's up everyone? I'm Zach Miller, author of Anomaly. And with me today, I have my co-host, Tim Ryan, lead man at startwheel.org. Thank you so much for joining us. The Fervent Four is a weekly show every Thursday at 11 a.m. dedicated to sharing insights into growing a world-class business, no matter the climate. Say hello and welcome to Lee Sheridan, owner of Two Maids in a Mop, a one-time and subscription-based home and commercial cleaning service based right here in the 757. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, Zach. Hey, Lee. How you doing, uh, guys? I think the, the first thing that we should talk about is the fact that uh, you're very pretty in pink today. Was that your favorite 80s movie? Uh, one of them. One of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So Lee, um, I, I think now that the second, now we'll get to the second question. The Pittsburgh Steelers are at three and O. Oh, you own a home and commercial based cleaning business. Is it frowned upon to use a terrible towel to clean one's home? If I'm around, it is. Yeah, well, I don't recommend it. Uh, we do bust them out in my house on on Sundays. Everybody does have their own, sometimes two. Yeah, but to twirl, not to clean with. Yeah, I got one in my office here too, as well. So. Yeah, we've 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 got it. We've got it stocked pretty well. There you go. <laughs> who who is the best team in the NFL right now? It's still the Chiefs, isn't it? The, Chiefs. the Bills look pretty good. Yeah, uh, that's that's short. That's usually temporary. Hey man, we let us let us have our <laughs> three weeks in the spotlight. <laughs> Uh, so Lee, I met you about a year ago at a, I believe, Marketers Anonymous event in downtown Norfolk. Maybe we met before that, but I can't recall. And, and Tim, I think you guys met at a similar event, if not the same event. Yeah. And uh, at the time, business was 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 booming, was going up. And uh, I don't know, six months after that, this little thing called 2020 that everyone wants to uh, talk about as the worst year ever. When, when COVID hit you back in March, well, what was going kind of on the month before and then immediately after? Yeah, so we, um, you know, we've, we, we opened in 2017 and 2017 and we've seen some pretty, you know, pretty steady growth. Um, and then the beginning of 2020, uh, we did make some changes with regards to marketing as well as our target customer. Um, and we did see some incremental growth. And then of course, March hit um, and we lost about 30% of our customers. Um, so, you know, we were, we made the right moves in order to incrementally grow our business. I mean, this is one of those businesses where you really don't want to grow way too fast because then, you know, your, your, your customer count goes through the roof, but also your quality can tank. So we need to measure that, that growth and, and monitor it accordingly to maintain quality. So, um, you know, we, we, we were growing at a pretty good pace and then we had to obviously deal with what everybody else had to deal with. So as a business owner of a few years at that point and a guy who had been kind of entrepreneurial over the years and then rec shop happens, like, how do you handle that? Because, I mean, I think I think the biggest question back in March was just this unknown of like the severity of something from a business perspective. How, how are you mentally, emotionally, physically handling something that none of us had ever handled in, in our lifetimes? Yeah, so it was it was difficult from the aspect of, you know, we. So as entrepreneurs and business owners, you know, we are responsible for putting food on the table of our employees. You know, the decisions that I make have an impact not only to the business, but obviously those that are that are that are supporting my business and, and my employees. So my biggest concern was, geez, you know, are these people going to have work and, and how are we going to keep them busy and, and what can we do? Um, so, you know, I remember having meetings in March saying, Hey, listen, this thing's going to pass, right? Like, like in a couple of weeks, we'll be all right. You know, here are the numbers and the numbers of Virginia weren't, weren't that bad. Um, and then, then things started, you know, getting bad. So, you know, my biggest concern when this whole thing happened was what do I do? Do I lay them off? Do I, you know, keep them on board, but pay them a minimum? Um, but the revenue is not coming in. So it's at some point, you know, that, that, that train comes to its final station. So, um, you know, we had a lot of things that we had to really kind of think through. And, and my communication to my staff was, 
hey, listen, let's let's ride this out. We don't know what's going to happen, but let's diversify, right? So, so we were not doing commercial work at that time. So we said, listen, let's start dabbling in the commercial, you know, environment and, and see what we can offer those individuals that are either going because at that point people were going in a couple of days a week or they had some staggered shifts and things like that. So we said, let's see what we can offer there. In addition to that, you know, I had other things that I could do have them do, which would be marketing, even going out and putting door hangers on, paying by the hour. So we really looked for ways to keep people busy and, and make sure that those those paychecks kept flowing. Yeah, I want to uh, have you further set the stage in terms of what your business landscape was. One of the things that was really uh, innovative when I first met you was uh, what you were doing from an Airbnb side. Can you uh, share what you were doing with Airbnb and how you grew that business side of the business? Sure. So when I opened and it was and it's it's actually a funny situation, but when I opened in April of 2017, uh, I got a call from a gentleman in May saying, hey, I, I've got these Airbnbs. I had this this lady that was doing you know, all the cleanings and doing all the laundry and doing all this stuff. And and she just flaked out and bailed on me. So I've got these four Airbnbs that I need turned. People are checking in today. And I said, wait, wait a second. What what the hell are you talking about? And he's like, well, Airbnbs, you know, short term rentals. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. I said, but, you know, you said you got four of them. He's like, yeah, I have these duplexes and, and there's, you know, there's some units I have. He's like, so I need somebody to come help me out. And we were I mean, we were just open for a month and I had my staff out. And, and of course, I'm in here and the phone's not ringing. So I got um, I got time. So. I said, hey, man, I'll, I'll come over and well, let's talk. Went over. I helped them turn all four units. Um, so we got everything squared away. And a couple of days later, we sat down and, and and talked about what his, you know, what his business was, what he needed. Uh, so I said, all right, you know, we can absolutely help you out. So really within a week, I brought in, you know, four additional units. Right. And I started offering a laundry service as well as a seven day a week turn service. Um and it was good, right? Because we were floundering, not say floundering, but we were new, right? So we didn't have that that notoriety. So we started working seven days a week. It gave my staff, you know, additional hours. It gave us an insight into that that business. Um, and then we just I essentially started a whole nother business called Beach Hospitality Services after that. And now I provide all the equipment. I provide the linens, towels, duvets, duvet covers, paper products soap, shampoo, conditioner, and a laundry service. So we'll go strip everything, clean the place, refill everything, bring it back here, have it laundered professionally. And then next time we go back to that place, we'll bring the clean stuff, strip it and, you know, rinse and repeat. Right. So yeah, it was a market that was just totally underserved. Um, and having an organization that really did everything from end to end, um, is, is something that a lot of these, these hosts or homeowners were looking for. And I think what's interesting about that is it wasn't, you know, part of the quote unquote business plan when you got started, you had no idea that it was there and you, you, but, but what I love about it is that when that guy called, you thought, okay, hold on, this is an opportunity. And I think that's where so many people miss is they hear something and they, they just let it roll off and you heard something and said, hold on a second what can I do with this? How can I examine and go deeper into this? And I think that that's something that most people don't do, even though that opportunity shows up. Right. And so you're, you're kind of, what's the quote? Like uh, if the, if someone doesn't knock on the door, you know, I don't know, uh, shovel your way through or something like that. I'm terrible at quotes, but <laughs> it's like, Hey, like here, the, the door is kind of even opening, I guess for you, but like you have to like pave that path. And so now that's been something where you've created a completely different division of business off of it on something that you weren't, anticipating. And I think that's, that's, that's super rad. Yeah. And it was, you know, and again, it was really came out of the, came out of the blue and, and, but it was pretty serendipitous from the aspect of, I need business. This guy's got his back against the wall. I could solve your problem right now. Right. So, um, and that has expanded quite a bit. And, and like I said, we've, we've got a handful of customers through beach hospitality and, and beach hospitality and, and two maids and a mop, um, essentially work, you know, hand in fist. So it's a, it's a great marriage, so to speak, because again, people are getting everything and we also offer, and I say we offer, but a lot of these people who own these, these short-term rentals and investment properties, they're not local. So when something goes south, right? Like the, the HVAC goes down or, you know, somebody spills wine on the carpet or whatever, 
hey, listen, we got it. I got a carpet guy. I've got a painter. I've got whatever you need. And I can, and I can essentially help you get that squared away. And I just kind of put each other, the people in, in contact with each other. But they're licensed. They're bonded. They're insured. And if they trust me, hopefully they're going to trust the people that I recommend. And that's worked out really, really well. And given those people that are, you know, a thousand miles away, a ton of peace of mind that their properties are, are being taken care of appropriately. In, in your world, why why does license and bonded and some of those other things that you were talking about, why is that so uh, important for the consumer to hear that? You know, it's, so we live in a, you know, obviously a military community. Um, Safety is a big deal. Um, it, people have unique things in their homes just because they've traveled the world. Um, being licensed, bonded and insured to me resonates from the aspect that, you know, somebody cares about their business enough to go through the extra hoops to make sure that not only are they protected, but the people that they put inside of somebody else's home are protected as well as those homeowners. I've got a 20 something year background in insurance, right? So I did, you know, I, I lived in a dangerous and sexy, you know, environment of insurance claims for, for 20 something years. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, when things go south, they go south fast and, and it's, it's difficult to recover if you don't have the appropriate coverage in place to mitigate that risk. So we're insured, properly everybody's bonded i mean i've got more insurance than i need and 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 it's the right thing to do because i don't want somebody in my house that's not licensed bonded insured things like that because i don't want to be on the hook for somebody's neglect and i don't want to be on the hook for somebody's inability to make sure that they're running a tight business appropriately what's uh so breaking down what your numbers were you had uh, the airbnb side commercial side uh, residential side. What, what kind of numbers are we uh, we talking when you break everything down? So, if we were to look at it from from 2019 um, year end kind of breakdown, I would say. And again, our Airbnb business is very seasonal, right? So, mm -hmm. um, we're running seven days a week from May pretty much through September, and then and then it it drops off the cliff, um, which is which is okay. You know, it's uh, everybody needs to kind of catch your breath. Um, but if I were to look at it over the, the, the year of 2019, about 70% of our revenue is coming from two maids and a mop, uh, recurring customers. Those are houses that we're in every week, every other week, maybe once a month. Um, and, and so that's primarily where we're getting it. And, and then also some one-time customers we're doing move in, move outs, uh, deep cleanings, or, Hey, my mother-in-law is coming to visit. Can you come clean the house? Um, you know, we do a ton of that. So I'd say 70% comes from there. Um, about, uh, about 15 to 20%, um, comes from Airbnbs. Um, and then the balance is coming from the commercial as well as we're also offering a fogging service, a disinfecting fogging service. Um, so that is starting to, to kind of take some, take some root now, which is, which is good. Yeah. Before I uh, forget, uh, one of the questions that I'm curious about is how has the record low mortgage rates and the hot real estate market, how has that affected business? Yeah. So we, we work with a ton of realtors um, and that market, as you guys know, is hot, right? So money is cheap um, and, and people are looking to buy houses left and right. The biggest problem with the housing market is, is, is inventory in general. Um, and a lot of my Airbnb customers are, are taking advantage of that market and what they're doing is they're putting their homes up for sale, um, which is great. We've got an established relationship with those folks. So we essentially prepare those houses, deep clean them, you know, for lack of a better term, stage them because we already have all the, all the blankets and, and things like that. So we, we stage those houses. Um, but it has become fast and furious, right? So people are selling houses or putting their houses on the market and they need it clean. Now uh, we're going to show it this weekend. When can you get in? So we have had some scheduling issues where, Hey, listen, we're, we're booked out right now for two weeks, um, which is great. You know, it's a great problem to have, but, I'd really like to be able to tell those folks, yeah, I got, I've got some availability and we can, we can bring you on, but it's that market has blown up and we have seen the impact. So how do you, when someone calls and says, Hey, I, I need you to clean this and you can't fulfill that order fast enough. You have to tell them two weeks. How do you communicate that so that you don't lose the business? So my, the way I kind of handle that Zach is really, I, I want to give back, right? I want I want to take care of people who are, are starting their businesses or or learning this business and things along those lines. So I work with a handful of smaller uh, cleaning companies who I I have somewhat of a mentor relationship with, 
Um, and if I can't do it, usually my, my question is, all right, first question, when do you need it done? I need it done this week. All right. Well, that's probably not happening uh, unless we have a cancellation. Um, and if they need a rock solid, like, yeah, you know, we can do it. Now, sorry, right, here's like three other organizations or three other people that I trust and, and that I do business with. So um, let me reach out to them and see if they have any availability. If they do, can I share your, your contact information with them? I mean, my point is this. I don't care if I never do business with you. All right. I really I, I would love to. Right. But but I would also like to establish a good relationship with you. Whereas if you need anything and again, from a, a, a painter to a plumber to, you know, a carpet guy, whatever, I hope we can establish enough trust that if you need anything, you'll reach out to me. And, and you know that whoever I recommend is going to be a trustworthy, licensed, bonded, insured individual who's going to do good work. At the end of the day, if if I end up cleaning for you in a year or two years, that's great. But hopefully everything I've given you up to that point has been useful for you. So we tend to work with a lot of other organizations. And, you know, if I can't do it, I'm going to hand it off. I mean, I want to take care of that individual, make sure that they don't have to worry about scrambling. Because, you know, right now, if you search cleaners in the area, you're going to get a ton of people. Mm -hmm. And those people might have started their company last week or two weeks ago. So. I don't want to give them business because as far as I'm concerned, they're not vetted yet. So let me give you some people that I've vetted already. Something that's interesting is uh, I've been riding my bike a lot in 2020 and uh, bike stores have been actually, I'll bring Tim on this cause he'll want to hear this. So bike stores have been um, sold out of bikes and to get a bike tune up or like work done on your, your bicycle, not a motorcycle, your bicycle um, to get like a tune up, the local bike shop that I bought my bike from Conti's was like six or seven weeks. Like you have to drop it off and they'll get, return it in six or seven weeks. I'm like, Oh, that's ridiculous. So, um, my buddy here, <laughs> no, no, nothing. Like, you can get the beach cruiser. I'm like, look, I don't need a beach cruiser. I'm like trying to go fast, trying to go fast. Um, and so my buddy Eric, who's been on the show, has uh, found this guy called uh, Jimmy Z, and he has a mobile uh, truck, like a like a legit food truck, but like he does mobile um, tuning. And uh, so we text him, and literally the guy is booked solid for like three or four weeks. And so you just gotta book it, and it's like yeah, there's nothing else you can do. You know, do you, do you want the one that's booked solid, or you want the crappy one that's gonna not show up in three days? And so, you know, I, I um, you book him and four weeks later he comes, gets the job done. And hopefully you, you're able to schedule something enough in the future so that when you need your bike worked on it, it, it's like that. And so, but that's what's unique about the subscription model in yours is, is they can get on the calendar more. And, and, I, and I can imagine that that's something that you guys encourage people quickly, like, hey, like, we'll get you in or we can get you in, you know, in seven to 21 days. But if you want this thing to happen more frequently and and to, to be on the schedule, you're going to have to get on our schedule in our terms of a frequency. Yeah. And, and there's also the component of overselling and under delivering. Right. So, um, you know, people who have large homes. Right. So let's say they've got a thirty five hundred square foot house and they want a deep clean. Well, hey, listen, I, you know, while we normally want to go out and, and take a look and make sure that that is something that that we can go in and do a good job, because trust me, I don't want to go into a hoarder's house. I don't want to go into a house that's got 10 pets. I can't win. Right. I just I can't win. The second I walk out, the place is going to look like I never touched it. Right. So we want to make sure that the customer fits into, you know, our model. Well, um, and people have large homes and they, you know, essentially want it as soon as possible. And I know that a deep clean is going to take anywhere from four to six hours to get it done right. Those people are like, well, you know, well, what other packages do you have? I said, well, we have other packages that are less expensive, but they also don't give you that a, a amount of time that's probably necessary to get done what you need to get done. And they said, that's fine. I'll, I'll take that. I'll, if you got three hours on a Thursday, you know, book me, I'll take it. And my conversation with them is all right, we'll, we'll do it. But you have to understand that, you know, we're only going to do a, a couple of things. We're not going to be able to do the whole house. And so and that's where we can kind of go back to them and say, now, that being said, we do have availability the following week and we can probably do another three hours and that'll get you where you probably need to be. So let's start with this. Maybe we'll do the first floor and then maybe next week we'll do, you know, the, the upstairs and the bedrooms and things like that. So it does allow us to, to kind of, you know, and I don't want to say, you know, sell something else because I'm, I'm not trying to, to upsell it as much as I'm trying to make sure that because at the end of the day, I'm a consumer, too. Right. I don't want to I don't want to pay a ton of money and not get what I expected to get. 
Um, so we can usually do that, you know, one service this week, one service next week. Um, and now we've given you everything you needed, but we just couldn't do it all in one fell swoop. When Corona hit and maybe even now, I, I, I think you just alluded to the fact that someone on your staff goes out to a house, gives it a test run to make sure that it, it, it fits your needs. And then you guys go out. What, what kind of protocols have you guys put in place to make the the homeowner or the person's uh, residence or the business feel safe when there's you know outsiders in in their home, which normally weren't there? Yes, we mandated fairly early on in the pandemic that we are wearing masks and gloves. Um, so we are showing up to your door with masks and gloves. Um, if they don't, that's that's you know not good for them. Um, we very rarely am I saying this is a mandate. You must absolutely do this. Um, but it, it, it kind of cuts both ways, right? It's, it's for their safety as employees, also for the safety of our, um, our customers. I mean, bottom line is you're going into somebody's house. It's not, it's, it's not your rules, it's theirs. So we're going to go in with a mask and gloves. And if our customer says, you know what, don't worry about it. You don't need to wear the mask. Then fine. You have an option of whether, you know, take it off or not. But most of the time our, our folks are keeping it out um, because, I don't want to have an issue here where now I've got, you know, uh, and it's impacting my business and I've got to call customers and say, Hey, you know, I got one of my, co- my, my employees who, who was positive or, or whatever, but um, we've been very aggressive and we're also, you know, we're, we're spraying down the office. Like I said, we have a disinfecting fogger. Um, I should have five of them. Um, so we're disinfecting the office. We are disinfecting the equipment. Um, and, you know, we're, we're being as proactive as humanly possible to make sure that, you know, we're managing our business effectively. I mean, it's the cleaning business, right? So we've got to make sure we're keeping everything clean internally. Is that something that you think you'll continue to do even when, you know, regulations go away? Yeah. I mean, it's, there's no harm to it really. And it, and it doesn't take a ton of time. Um, you know, and like I said about the, the laundry earlier, we outsource our laundry to a professional laundry um, company that, you know, essentially heats it to the right temperature and, and make sure that there's no issues there. So we've essentially put these safeguards in place that not only are the things that are coming into this office managed appropriately, but we're not sending it back out unless we've handled it properly. So um, we've been pretty aggressive in putting those protocols in place to make sure that everybody's safe. Sorry, Tim. So you still, yeah, I, at one point you had a bunch of machines in there. Are you outsourcing that that cleaning aspect now? We're out, the-, the laundry we're outsourcing, yeah. Got it, cool. Yeah. So I'm actually looking for, I got to, we've grown, right? So I need more space. So I'm looking to essentially put in commercial washers and dryers in my new space. Um, that'll, you know, I'll be able to do everything internally, but because of what we're dealing with, I just, I just don't want the responsibility of, of, of making sure that that is done because there, there are protocols, you know, with regards to like hotels and things like that. So essentially these are companies that, that are you know, outsourced by hotels and, and things along those lines and, and they do it right. Um, and you know, I feel a lot more comfortable offering that service to my customers and they should feel a lot more comfortable, especially from an Airbnb perspective, telling their guests as a host that, Hey, two maids and a mop has come in and done the cleaning. They've provided a fogging service and they've managed the laundry, which is outsourced and it has been handled, you know, appropriately based on COVID and CDC regulations. Yeah. Let's dive into, uh, staffing. That seems to be the big challenge that everybody has. Talk to us a little bit about before March, what you're, you know, how were you from a staffing level? And then during the pandemic, uh, in terms of at the height and where you're at now, um, how you've worked with staff, kept staff, maintained the level that you needed, and then where you're at today. Yeah, so we... Um we're always hiring, right? I mean, this is a revolving door type of industry um, and we're always hiring. I've always got jobs up. Um, We were staffed fairly well uh, and I try to be overstaffed uh, as much as possible for for various reasons, but I try to be overstaffed. Um, It just allows us some flexibility with with the people that we have. Um, But we were staffed pretty well uh, as we were entering into March. Um, and then obviously this happened, um, and we were overstaffed, right? Because 30% of our business pretty much said, Hey, let's hit the pause button until this, this business is over. Um, so we hit the pause button. Now we're overstaffed and, and 
we lost a couple people just to natural attrition um, and to folks who really just didn't want to be in other people's houses. And, and, and that was probably okay uh, from a staffing perspective, given the business had, you know, paused. Um, and then as we started coming out of it, you know, you essentially have the government that's paying everybody. And I never laid anybody off. We didn't furlough anybody because my, my thought process when this whole thing happened was, you know, one of two things is going to happen. You know, either this is going to be over in a minute and, and you know, everything's going to resume or it's going to be however long. And what's going to happen though is once it's over, everybody's going to say, Hey, I need my house clean. Like, come on, come on back, you know? And, and so my concern was if the latter happened and we didn't have the staff, then we would be in a tough spot. Right. And, and so that's exactly what happened. Um, the business started coming back. All of our recurring customers came back and they brought their friends and then the real estate market went bananas. And so we're selling houses left and right. We're cleaning, doing deep cleans. We're doing maintenance cleans for when the, the houses are being shown because, you know, we want to maintain that house and make sure that as people come through it, we clean it behind them, disinfect behind them, all that stuff. So we're running seven days a week. And then also Airbnbs, literally went off the deep end they just they stopped it, it, you know may this year where people usually start going out and doing airbnbs we hardly had any airbnb business in may and then in june they flipped a switch on and we probably had 150 bookings that came in overnight and and we had to essentially adjust for that so now think about it go trying to get people to work when they were sitting around getting 600 700 800 bucks a week and, and and listen I'm, I'm not saying that that bailout wasn't appropriate it absolutely was people needed to to keep working if they could and if they couldn't they needed to maintain their families so now i need to get people in to work everybody says hell no i'm i'm doing just fine how i am <laughs> um and, and so can you blame we, them oh no and I, and, I, and i guess you know it's it's hard because i wasn't in that position and i don't know what it's like to be in that position um but i could assume that hey listen my my life's actually probably pretty darn good, maybe even better than it was before this thing happened. So I'm going to ride this train as long as I can. And, you know, it's hard for me because I own a business as, as we all do. Right. And and I own a business. So I'm like, but wait a second, my business is going to flounder if, if I can't bring you in. And then after this is over and the money ends, those people who were hiring might not be hiring anymore. So, so the job you want might not be there anymore. So it was, it was a tough place to be. Um, but I'll tell you, before the, the pandemic, we had a bunch of jobs posted and I was getting 30, 40 applicants a week throughout the pandemic that dropped and dropped and dropped. And I'd be lucky, honestly, and I have five, six, seven jobs open right now. Um, I'd be lucky if I get an applicant a day. Um, so and, and, and we're having an issue bringing those people in. So I'll set interviews. Uh, people just don't show for their interviews. You know, it's 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 really a way to to make sure that they continue to get those checks, whether it be unemployment or whether it's the uh, the check from the government um, for the for the the pandemic um, issue. So it's a um, it's it's very very difficult. I am if I had two more teams that I could run, um, we'd be able to service those people who are asking for service within a week. Um, but we just I can't I can't get them in here, and we've got a great environment. You know. My, my staff is paid on commission. They're not paid hourly. My staff makes more money than than probably any other cleaning company around. Um, you know, and in this industry, that's, you know, it, a lot of people are, are paying 10 bucks an hour or 11 bucks an hour or, or paying by the house. I mean, I had a, an employee this past, and this Friday is a payday. I had an employee making 1800 bucks this past payday, this pay period. I mean, that's a lot of money. You know, and and I'm all for it. You know, as the owner, you would think that I'm cringing that somebody's making that. I'm all for it. If I'm going to blow out any budget, I hope it's my compensation budget, right? Because that means people are happy, business is booming, we're growing. So that's fine. I'm I'm all for it. But trying to get people to 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 come in, it's it's hard. It's the biggest struggle I have. You may know him as Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I know him as just a man who has done incredible things for the last few decades. But how can you use his techniques in your business? I'll show you exactly how. Head on over to ZachMillerSays.com backslash The Rock and you can smell what he's cooking. I don't I mean, think we're gonna get old. Say what? It will never get old. It will never get old. It's always interesting seeing that commercial.
So do you use that line, not the rock line, the line of we're paying more than other cleaning services and that's not pulling people in? Or why do you think, or, or, or through your observations, other than the, the fact that people were getting a higher bailout, number is that the only thing that's really it or is it is it something different like why like because it seems like you have a good shop you are paying more than other places you are are giving you know benefits that are valuable to people you're helping grow people i i mean i've seen you even post things about uh you know staff you posting on behalf of the staff looking for specific um help on on, on certain things like it seems like things are great there like why do you think that people aren't coming in the way that you want them to? I, I wish I had the, I wish I had the, the silver bullet answer, but I, you know, it's hard work, right? It's hard work. Um, you know, we're in, we're in the midst of a pandemic, obviously. So you're going into people's houses. So there's a comfort level with that. You know, you, you have to have somebody who's somewhat of an extrovert. Um, and, and not to say that our customers are home all the time because they're certainly not probably 85 percent of our customers well <laughs> now that people are working from home it's probably probably like a 60 percent of our customers are not home 40 percent of them are now um but you know it's hard work i mean it's it's it is hard work and and, and i don't ever want to make light of that um but it's you know it, it is a service we provide a service just like you know we're in the service industry so you know we provide a service and we look at our customers very vanilla right so we might go into a house that's absolutely a train wreck and we don't go in there and, and judge our customers, right? We look in there and say, listen, we don't know if this person is dealing with a, a, a death in the family, uh, an illness, um, depression, you know, things like that. We, we really don't. We look at it from the aspect of we're providing a service to somebody who needs help. Um, and, and there's just some people out there that that aren't comfortable with that. And, and we talk about that a lot. And one of our core values is to help others. Um, and, and we try to be as benevolent as possible. And we do free cleanings for, for cancer patients and for, for families that have lost a, an infant. Um, and, and so we do a lot of that stuff. And there's just some people who, who, who don't know how to tolerate that. Um, and so when and it's one of the very first things that I do on a phone screen is I explain to people that, that you know, benevolence and, and helping others is, is, a, is a big part of what we do. We have to, you know, we have to essentially you know, invite people to a longer table versus a higher fence. And so there's some people who are just like, well, it's, it's really not my deal. I'm, I'm kind of a you know, quiet person. I like to kind of, you know, do these things and, and that just doesn't fit into my, um, you know, my kind of world. So, um, and that, I think that might scare some people away. Um, and this is a, this is a loud, boisterous group. I mean, we had a meeting this morning from seven 30 to, to 10 o'clock and, you know, I thank God I had to close my door, but you know, there's, there's 20 folks that are out there and they're loud and they're having a good time and they're chatting. Um, and I love it. I love it. You know, I, the louder, the better, because if it's quiet, then I I'm terrified to go out there. I'm terrified. <laughs> I, I don't know what they're plotting. Um, but when it's loud, that means everybody's happy. They're getting along. Um, and you know, they're all making money. So it's a good place to be. I don't, I mean, I don't know how to, how to, how to generate any more excitement outside of the people who know what this is about to come on board with us. How do you, uh, so two questions. What, how do you set up teams uh, in terms of crews? And uh, do you have a specific, your words, not mine, train wreck crew that uh, specializes in the, uh, the more difficult tasks? So we, um, so everything we do is with a team of two, right? So it's two maids and a mop for a reason. Um, you know, everything we do is with a team of two, sometimes three. Um, you know, I'm not an always or never guy, right? So I don't say we always do two because sometimes we'll do three. Um, and we never do a team of one because there might be, you know, a, a, an easy couple of things one person can hit on their own. So I'm not an always or never guy, but um, for the most part, we're doing everything. I'll probably say 90% of the time with a team of two. They go through a week of training. Um, and I tell everybody that you're on probation for 30 days because I'm going to bounce you around to everybody in this office and see where you fit best. Um, and we're going to match some strengths with some weaknesses so that we can balance out teams because they get paid as a pay for performance system. So when we're done cleaning a house, a text message goes out to the customer saying, Hey, how do we do? Give us a rating on a scale from one to 10 and provide any feedback. And that rating, because it's commission based, that rating is what determines the commission that they are paid 
based on you know a two week pay period. It's based on the total amount that I bill over two weeks. So they do have a built in incentive plan to do a good job, and they do have a built in incentive plan to make sure that their partner is a good match. So we kind of go through a, a couple you know different processes to make sure that we're mat we're matching the right people up you know with each other um, because. I, if they don't do work well together, they're going to get bad ratings and they're going to get bad paychecks. I'm going to have, you know, a bad reputation as a business and my business is going to tank. So it's in nobody's best interest to work with somebody that they just really like working with if they continue to do a poor job. So when we get those ratings in, those ratings really help us determine whether or not those two people are a good match and a good team. And then we'll adjust accordingly based on customer feedback. Is that something that the um, performance pay performance system, is that something that is unique to the home cleaning service? Um, it's unique to us. It's unique to us. Okay. And so is how do you communicate that to individuals that might not be, so you're to your staff, how do you communicate to your staff that it's a unique um, model where, you know, they go somewhere else and it's, you know, you're getting, 10 bucks an hour and you just get the job done and you get there. So how do you communicate that to those individuals who might not be up to par with understanding that kind of um, protocol, if you will? So from a customer perspective, it's one of the things that we really, um, we really push at that initial uh, conversation. So when we do have, you know, we introduce our customers to kind of who we are and whatnot, we do explain that we have a pay for performance system that, you know, your feedback has an impact on, on paychecks. And, and so we do really request that. Um, and then when we look at it from an employee perspective, it's one of the first things that we talk about. I mean, who, who goes in for an interview and doesn't have a question about pay, right? So it's one of the first things that come, comes across. Um, and it's, and it's in our, our, um, it's in our employment ads as well. Um, where we post that, you know, it's a pay for performance system. Here's how it works. So we're, we're extremely transparent on that, extremely transparent. Um, and it's, and when we say commission, it's not like the commission is between zero and 50%. The commission that we pay is between 17 and 20%. So it's never going to get lower than 17, but it will get higher than 20 because we give away about a thousand dollars or more a month in bonuses. And everything we do here is merit based everything we do is performance based everything i wonder just just thinking about this if bringing on people at this point has been some some sort of a struggle let's just say right it's been hard to get people on at this point i wonder if so and i haven't seen the direct ad but like do they understand that they're getting at least a minimum and it's not like a full commission or do you think there's some discrepancy there I mean, I can see where there could be a discrepancy or there could be, you know, a question with regards to, you know, is it zero percent? Um, right. Because, I mean, in you know, in a, not that this is a sales job in any kind of way, but in a sales job, you know, not every company gives a draw. Right. But so then you get the commission. You feel like you're well, that person. So like with like uh, like Postmates and Uber Eats and things like that. Uber Eats makes you tip beforehand, where Postmates, and at least in the past when I've used them, allows you to tip after you get it. Right. And so if I forget it, you know, that's a pay performance system. They're not getting as much money. And so I wonder if if, if, if that's getting into the to the system where people are just a little confused. Who knows? It could be, but you know, I think the um you know, our, our, the ad that we have posted through our website and indeed and whatnot, there's a video on there. It, it, I think it's explained pretty clearly. Um, but then again, you know, people hear what they want, read what they want, understand what they can. And we've seen a lot of that, right? I've, I've explained the, the pay system here numerous times. And sometimes people are like, you know, my check's wrong. It's either too much or it's not enough. And, and we'll talk about, okay, well, <laughs> let's, let's break well, down the math. We, we see that every day on the internet. Yeah, we believe yeah. what we want to hear. Yeah, so it's you know it's uh, <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's uh, even on the uh, simplest of things. Yeah, yep. Yeah, with that, uh, <clears throat> what I have seen is that businesses do really well because they know their numbers, or businesses do really poorly because of their numbers. But everything comes down to knowing what your numbers are and what you do with those numbers. What what are the most important metrics slash numbers that you pay attention to that mean the most to your business? 
Yeah, so that's a great question. And you can probably see behind me the, the whiteboard, not the bear dance, but the whiteboard. Um, so I track everything, right? So I come back, I come from a, an insurance background where we did, you know, a lot of analytics. Um, we measured a lot of metrics. And, you know, I think the old adage is what gets measured gets done, right? So um, I do a lot of I look at the numbers on a regular basis, uh, essentially weekly. I look at what we did last week and, and uh, I set targets for this week um, and we communicate that. And that's, you know, another thing here that I want to, I want, I want people to grow, whether they grow here or elsewhere. That's fantastic. I just promoted uh, a young lady who's been with me for three years. I just promoted her into a, uh, an ops assistant um, position, which she's going to do inside and outside stuff, which is great. Um, so when we look at numbers in and of themselves, a couple of things that that really stand out that 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 drive revenue um, and crust and customer growth is first and foremost NPS, right? So we do measure NPS score. Um, I think most people know is Net Promoter. Um, so we have promoters, detractors, um, and we look at that regularly. So since we're sending out a, a, a you know a request for feedback to all of our customers, it's pretty easy to do that, and we use a system that essentially aggregates that information. Um, so we track that. We have a target um, that we want to hit. And right now we're, we're hovering about 86, 87 percent NPS, um, which is which is excellent. It's fantastic. Um, and anything that comes in, that's anything under an eight, eight we'll still call on because we're asking for a rating between one and ten. Um, so eight will call on sevens. We're definitely in anything below we're calling on. And so that's that's Alex's position, right? She's now, anytime we get those reviews, she's picking up the phone saying, hey, we appreciate your feedback. What could we have done better to earn a 10? Or how can we develop our people? And everything is very developmental. It's not punitive. I don't bring anybody in here and beat them down because they got a seven. We bring them in and say, hey, listen, you guys could have gotten a 10. And it's simple, right? You just, you missed A, B, and C. So because I want you to maximize your paycheck, and I'm, I'm genuine when I say that, Let's just make sure we hit these things moving forward because it was pretty important for this and cu this customer that you know that we missed it. So we'll update the notes. We'll do those things. So NPS is huge. In addition to that, recurring customers. So our recurring customer count is really something that determines the health of the business. If our recurring customer count is going down, then that means we've got a you know we've got an issue with our, our folks in the field. We've got an issue with quality, um, or there's an external driver, right? So the economy right thankfully here in, in you know southeast virginia it's not like we're in manhattan or in seattle where where the majority of of the economy is driven by the stock market here dod drives our economy right so as long as we're still building ships and sending people out and slinging bombs we're in pretty good shape right so um so our economy doesn't see all that too much so um so recurring customers is a big one. And then the, the mix of recurring versus one time, um, because, you know, obviously this is a, a subscription based recurring based business. The more recurring we have, the more revenue we're going to generate over the, the duration. So we want to have, you know, 70 to 80 percent of our revenue coming from recurring and then the balance coming from one time services. So those are really three metrics that 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 really I monitor on a fairly regular basis. Well, and once you have them, it's easier to upsell them or get them in again. You know, it's uh, it's what well, here we are with a quote again. It's cheaper to retain a customer than to get a new customer, and so that's the recurring model. Yeah, so and that's um, similar to you know again my insurance background, right? So I don't want to go search for new customers. I want to you know my retention should be as high as possible so that organically they come back to me. Well, I mean, when was the last time that you fired your insurance person? It's been a while, yeah. you know, like mine's been 15, 16 years. And yeah. ironically, I didn't know the guy at the time. I actually like have met him through a, like, he's a, a friend of a friend. So like, it's, it's kind of weird how that ended up happening. But like, I just randomly called the insurance company, you know, for like home and auto and all, all that craziness. And I haven't changed in decades. Yeah. yeah. I, don't I don't think it's wild. I would think as well, there's got to be some sort of number that from a reoccurring standpoint that once you hit X times that you go back to the same household, that the lifetime value of that customer probably skyrockets because you have a client for life for the most part. Yeah. And, and we, you know, I, I, I broke down some of the numbers recently and uh, we've got 
Um, I, I got it written down somewhere. I think it's like 18 or 19 customers that we have had since we opened April, May uh, of 2017. Um, and, and, you know, so we've had them for over three years um, and they're huge promoters, you know, they're, they're huge promoters, but again, we're in a transient area, right? So with military and whatnot, you know, people are in and out here, you know, usually in three years. But when I look at people who've run through the life cycle of, of a customer, to me, that life cycle is I've moved in the area or I'm looking for a cleaning service. They keep us until we do the move out clean and they leave. And, and so to me, that's a successful, you know, longevity for, for a customer. Um, and again, you know, we lose customers just like anybody else for, for quality or for, for whatever, but you know, this business, there's a lot of moving parts, you know? So if I've got 15 people out in the field, you know, cleaning and they're in each, you know, let's say seven teams and they're in three, four houses a day, you're talking about a lot of moving pieces and, and stuff gets in the way, right? So kids get sick, cars break down. Um, people forget they got their cleaning today, despite we send a text message 48 hours in advance to remind you. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces and, and then there's an accountability problem where, Hey, we called you, told you we we're going to be here at whatever time you accepted. And they're like, Oh, I thought the time was whatever. So we do lose customers for, for things like that, but we get them back. They'll run through all of the other companies. And usually within six months, they're like, you know what? You guys really had it dialed in. Um, and sorry that we, you know, had a miscommunication. Um, but you know, we're, we're coming back, which is great. We already have their stuff and we'll, we'll welcome them back with, with open arms. But, um, you know, we do have some people that really run through that whole entire customer lifeline. Um, and, and it seems to be, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great feeling when we can do, you know, a move out for a customer, um, that we've been servicing for, you know, two years. It's, it's really good. The Fervent Four is powered by the Small Business Development Center, which helps local small businesses grow through counseling. If you're interested in learning more on how the SBDC can help your business, head to startwheel.org slash weekly. Okay, so uh, you had told us that you had received PPP, uh, EIDL, and a bunch of other uh, potential funding uh, or or, uh, forms of funding. As a business owner, a lot of those things at some point, and even still today, had a lot of unknowns associated with them, uh, whether or not something was going to be able to be forgiven and a plethora of other different things. How did you make decisions with such unknowns where in the past you would have had a very strict and uh, procedure to follow where when you took that money, my guess is you didn't know what really you were getting into. And so how did you make decisions with so many unknowns? Um, you know, I've got a lot of, um, I belong to a couple of different business groups. Um, and I've got great people like you two, um, who, who I certainly trust, um, and, and admire for, for what you guys have accomplished in business and, and personally. Um, so because of that, I am, I'm comfortable in the counsel I receive with regards to things along those, those, you know, those lines. Um, and there was no shortage of, there was no shortage of terror. There was no shortage of anxiety. Um, and because, you know, my crystal ball is broken, right? I didn't know what was going to happen in 90 days or six months. I didn't know if, you know, I'll be in, I didn't know if I was going to be generating enough revenue or the same revenue or less or more. So all of those unknowns suggested that you, you need to make a decision. And, and as a business owner, and again, the way I look at my business, it is employee first, then customer, then company. I figure if I take care of my employees, they're going to take care of my, my customers and my customers will take care of my company, right? They're going to help me grow because of word of mouth and because they're satisfied. So when I looked at my primary responsibility, which was my employees, I said, well, PPP is, is, is really a no brainer, right? So I don't know if I'm going to have to pay it back. It looks like they're saying that if it's under 150 grand, that they're they're going to forgive it, which which would be fantastic. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's the right thing to do, whether I need it or not. It's the right thing to do, and if I don't need it, then and they need it back, then I'll just <laughs> give them the money back. Um, so because of that, and looking at it through the lens of an employee versus a business owner, um, I would hope that if I was an employee of a of a small or a large company my owner, manager, senior staff would would pull the right strings to make sure that I've got food on the table, right? So um, so we applied for it. 
and and again through the organizations that that we are all a part of and, and contribute to um you know we were getting emails every day hey you can get the grant from this you can get a grant from that you can apply for this you can apply for that so all right you know it's a grant i probably don't need to pay it back right so yeah let's off let's let's put the pay and again i think it and Tim, to your point, you know, knowing your numbers and running a tight business and, and being a good leader and, and things like that, you have the information you need at your fingertips to essentially provide to these resources so that you can get the assistance you need. So I'm sitting on my desk and I've got a flash drive right here that's got all of my financials. And all I was there. wondering what you're pulling out there. That was going to yeah. be great. <laughs> like you're gonna start throwing out bills or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrible uh, towels so rolling around. One of those things where I'm like, yeah, let's 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 line it up and, and see what we get. And and so when I, I I heard a lot of stories, and I know we've we all know people who didn't get PPP money, didn't get EIDL money, EIDL uh, money, didn't get other grants, and they struggled to get their books in order. They struggled to get the information they needed in order to request that stuff properly yeah. because it wasn't like you know you filled out a you know a, a one page application and you were hey you're good to go you know here's 70 80 90 thousand dollars you know um so we were in a position that that we had everything all of our ducks were in a row we could you know pretty much you know put that on a, a elect you know e-file it and and we're done so because it was if you do it once you're going to use most of the same stuff again and again and again and again so that was kind of our mentality. Um, and then same thing with the EIDL money, right? It was, you know, do I ask for it? And, and at the end of the day, so why wouldn't I, why wouldn't I, if, if they give it to me, that's great. If I need it, that's even better. If I don't need it, I'll just, I'll just give it back. I've got 30 years to pay it back at that 3% or whatever there the, right. the was. And nothing on the first year or something like that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. why, I mean, why wouldn't I do it? So, so again, it's, it's, you know, you have to look at your business and, and and try and determine how it's going to be impacted. We had two months of, of, of negative, you know, cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, and then the floodgates opened, you know, and, and we, we essentially doubled in size, bought additional territory and, and, you know, we're, we're hiring vigorously. Well, I think someone once told me kind of the, the same thing you're saying is put yourself around good people. That'll give you good advice is they're like, uh, get access to money when you don't need it. And I was like, Oh, because when you need it, you're not gonna be able to get it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Makes sense. So yeah. like if you're in a position, if someone's listening and you're in a position where you can get money, get access to that, you don't have to touch it because if something were to happen, you won't be able to get it. Yep. And that's, and that's exactly the mentality that, that we use is that, you know, when, when, when times are good, you know, you know, no one anticipates bad happening either. Right. right. The only the only thing I think that you could anticipate coming from a, a you know quote unquote bad perspective is knowing that come October first your Airbnb side of the business is gonna go away. Yep. But that's because it's a seasonal business. You know that it's gonna pick back up, right? No one anticipated six, seven, however many months of, of COVID going through and, and seeing the transitions that have happened there. Yep. Um, I mean, no. My my oldest family member has never seen anything like this, or at least doesn't remember, right? Yeah. It's it's unique times across the board. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, Lee. I have to ask. I see the uh, the yard signs in the background. Oh boy. What's uh what, what's been the most uh, effective lead generator from a a marketing standpoint for you? You know, it's we we and like I said, when uh, when COVID hit, we uh, you know, I I really kind of took a fight or flight, you know, mentality. Um, and we dug in, we dug in and we decided to fight and I sunk a lot of money into marketing, a lot of money into marketing, um, SEO, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you name it. And then I bought, you know, those signs and I think I got a hundred of them, probably 350 bucks. Um, and, and so if the phones are a little bit slow, I'll go out and I'll put some signs out and, and the phones start ringing, um, which is, which is great. Um, the majority of, of where we get our business is, is, you know, Google it's, you know, I could put those signs out and essentially people will Google us and then they'll give us a call. And we always ask everybody, you know, how'd you hear about us? Um, so the majority of, of our leads are still coming in through Google, um, Yelp. Um, I mean, think about it. Nobody really does much of anything unless they read about it on Google or Yelp or Facebook. Um, and, and so, 
you know, we're, we get a lot from that. Um, we do still get a lot of referral business, you know, from our, our customers, recommendations from our customers. Uh, I would say about 20% of our business comes from that, but the majority of our leads are driven through, through Google. If you meet someone at a networking event or at an online networking event and they want to hear your elevator pitch 30 seconds or less, what's the pitch that you're giving them? I give you time back in your, in a week. That's it. You know? And three seconds, a new record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then when they ask, you know, how do you do that? Well, you know, nobody likes cleaning their house. Nobody likes doing these things, you know, for, you know, you hire me for two hours. I've essentially given you your weekend back. So you can go spend time with your kids. You can spend time with your, your husband. You can go picking apples this time of year. You can do whatever you want, but it's, uh, you know, we, we reduce stress. And one of the things that we've seen, especially now, and, and listen, the majority of our customers are women, right? So women usually are, are looking for these things. Um, if men are looking, it's usually because they are now in trouble with their women and they need the service immediately. Men shop, they don't care what it costs. They will give me the credit card first and then just say, whenever you can get here, the key's under the mat. Um, but women, you know, women have a lot on their plate, right? So women, you know, they, and I, and I look at my wife as a great example. She's, she's in corporate America. She's busy. She's, she's smart. She's amazing. She takes care of the house and I got teenagers and she's got, cause they're home now. Right. So she's got to deal with that all day. My life never changed. I come to work every day. My life never changed. She worked from home for however long. And now the kids are home too. So when you're used to having six, seven, eight hours alone, and now you've got teenagers that are asking you questions every 30 seconds and making a mess out of the kitchen. So things like that. So now we can come in and alleviate that. Like people are like, oh my God, you could you could actually live like this. Um, it's we've seen a, a huge change in people kind of knocking on our door, like, yeah, we're gonna do this instead of every other week. We're gonna do this every week now because I'm sick of my kids or I'm sick of like being locked in my house. And, and it gives people a good, you know, a good excuse to like, let's go to the park. Let's go for a walk. Let's take the dog for a walk. You get out of the house for a beautiful day for two hours and they come back and it's clean. So is that generally how it works? Uh, you all clean and the residents leave? If they're working from home, um, it's just, it's just, it helps us do a better job, right? If we don't have a navigate around them and, and things like that, it just, it helps us do a better job. What we do though, before we leave is we usually call or text them and say, hey, we're gonna be done in about 20 minutes if you wanna come and do a walkthrough just to make sure that you're content, make sure we didn't miss anything, put another set of eyes on it. Um, so we make sure we do that as often as possible because you know we wanna make sure that you're getting what you paid for. Um, and people are very, very thankful for that because you know we might miss one or two things just because you know we, we don't live in that house, right? So it's our first time there. So um, they'll point those things out, we'll hit them and, and they're, very, very grateful for that. So, uh, but most of the time they, they, they bail out, go to lunch or something like that. Is there something we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about? Um, you know, just, the, that we've expanded, right? So we were, we were in, Ch or in Virginia beach only. Um, now we were Virginia beach, Chesapeake, Norfolk, um, also Portsmouth and Suffolk. Um, so we're running seven teams. Hopefully that's going to be nine soon. Um, I'd mentioned earlier that we're offering a disinfecting fog service, which is is a pretty neat thing. Um, I ended up just on a whim, right, figuring out we don't know what's going to happen with this, uh, the, the whole COVID thing. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, who's actually in Jersey, he's a two maids franchisee as well. Um, he's like, hey, I can get a hold of these, you know, 10 of them for X amount of bucks. Um, if we buy them individually, it's, you know, this amount. If we buy 10 of them, it's that amount. So I so said, let's just buy 10 of them. We'll split the, we'll split the baby, so to speak. Um, so we did, and it's been great for the Airbnb market because, you know, for an Airbnb perspective, you transfer your cleaning cost off to your customer. So essentially what they're doing is they're saying to their customer, Hey, you know, here's the cleaning cost. If you want to do a disinfecting fogging service as well, it's an additional X amount of dollars, but the last person in the house that's doing the fogging service is us. The next person in is you as the guest. So, you know, you're coming into an environment that has been, you know, properly, you know, disinfected. So it's a, re it's an extra level of, of comfort. Same thing with uh, daycares, um, any childcare facilities, schools, things like that. You know, we can go in and clean it, fog it, and people, kids are coming in the next day and it's, it's a sanitary environment. So um, it's a really neat service. And as we come to like flu season, um, again it's just another layer of protection that 
for people who either have compromised immune systems or things along those lines, it's 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 a good it it's not going to hurt you. It can only help you, um, and it's something that you know it's pr- relatively easy to do. Um, but it's it it's something that we were never offering, and, and really, there's there's no other organization that is offering it in conjunction with a cleaning. So you can't fog a dirty place, right? You can't just walk in and fog a joint. You've got to clean it, then fog it, or else you're putting a disinfectant on top of dirt. Um, so it's a different, um, it, it's a little bit different product that we're offering, but it's something that does add value and and, and has an impact. Come October thirty first, is it also second as a fog machine outside for Halloween? If you put the appropriate chemicals in, it, <laughs> it could be. And the other thing I, I think I mentioned that, you know, we do free cleanings for people battling cancer. Um, so we work with an organization called um, Cleaning for a Reason. We do free cleanings for men and women and the families of children battling cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done over had over 30 customers or patients that we've handled over the past couple of years. Um, and we don't turn anybody away unless they're, you know, way outside of our territory. And if they are, we'll point them uh, towards an organization that will do it. Um, and then we're part of a company called or an organization called the Finley Project, and we do free cleanings for uh, families who have lost an infant. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we do give back. We give away about ten thousand dollars worth of cleanings a year um, and we and my, my team still get paid. Uh, I pay them, um, but we don't charge those customers um, and we love doing it. It's a tangible service. Right. So if you're battling cancer or you're ill last thing you want to do is clean your house. So we provide that service and and people just love it. You know, and I don't care if we clean for an hour and then we sit around and BS for an hour. Um, it's, it's something that's the right thing to do. So, so we do that and we are always looking for other organizations to partner with. Uh, where we can help out our community. So it's, uh, it's something that's near and dear to, to me as well as the rest of the folks here. That's wonderful. Those of you interested in learning more about Lee and Two Maids, go to twomaidsvirginiabeach.com. Get your house, your business, and everything else that you need clean in a residential or commercial setting cleaned. And uh, come Halloween, maybe you can borrow one of those five fog machines and put the old fogalicious up in there. <laughs> Lee. Appreciate your time, Tim. Always good to see you. Until next time, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, guys. You guys are great.